<laughs> Let's play! Whoa! Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. You all may call me Pharaoh, and welcome back to Let's Play Hotel Dusk Room 215. Last time we left off, we actually learned a little bit more about Louie from our boss, Ed, where apparently he may have been involved with this whole Nile thing, which is the crime ring that myself and Bradley were looking into back in New York. So we were looking for Louis all over the place, and uh, it looks like he's most likely in his room. So let's go ahead and uh, talk to him right now. This must be Louis's room. I can't just barge in there. I mean, I would have went for the doorknob, but still. Huh? Oh, it's you. How's it hanging, officer? You got a second? What do you want, man? We need to talk, and I don't want any extra ears. Especially not Rosar Dunning. Like I got a choice. Come on in, man. I enter Louie's room. Is it a nice room? Eh, it's a little dirty. And you got a lot of uh, girly pictures up there. All right. Oh, I can actually investigate. <laughs> well, actually, maybe not. I, I don't know if he's going to lit me, per se, because he's in here. I don't see the, uh, the examine button lighting up, so we may have to once uh, once he's not in here, maybe, if, we're a, if we can. But yeah, he has like a bunch of girly stuff on his walls. I mean, whatever. Teach their own. Listen, Louie. What gives, man? Why you want to come in here? We need to talk. Yeah? Well, you might want to talk, but I don't want to listen. I told you, man, I want to leave everything in the past. So just leave me alone, dig? Can't do it. I gotta talk to you, Louie. Aw, oh, man, what now? Are you gonna ask me about old times again, or what? When I mentioned Niall, you looked like you were gonna f to be you were going to be sick. Why is that, Louie? Speak up. I can't hear you. I don't want to talk about it. I'm too bad, Louie. Why not? All right, sorry, I had a little interruption there, but apparently the option I picked was not good. He, he got red. Cause I don't, man. Simple as that. No special reason. What? You're my shrink now? I told you to get out, Capiche. Not gonna happen. We got a chat, Louie. You heard me? Talk away, man. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna listen. I'm gonna keep asking until you start talking. When I mentioned Niall, you looked like you were going to be sick. Why is that, Louie? I can't hear you. So I mean it allows us to go back. So alright, whatever. Kinda interesting. Oh, you're gonna talk. You'll talk or we'll go round and round. I ain't talking, man. Kick me around or whatever. Makes no difference, man. You know, I know the score, Louie. You don't want to tell me your dead pal is neck deep in Niall's business. That's it, isn't it? What? Damn it, man. How'd you know that? Who told you about Danny? Oh, that one's red. The question box is red this time. I've never seen that one before. I got bad news, Louie. Niall's looking for you. What? What is it? Uh, hmm. You surprised or that's what LAPD is? No, let's say you surprised. That shouldn't be a surprise. Oh, crap. That's not, I ain't picking the wrong choices left and right today. No, man, no, nothing like that. I ain't that surprised. No, man, I, I don't know. I don't know anything. Climbing up won't help. All right, back to it. Cause like to me, it's just, it's a little hard to see like, what, cause like I'm interpreting differently what the game's gonna do. It's kind of the same thing like Ace Ace Attorney series. It's like I think one line of questioning or I, I think a statement is gonna go one way, but it goes completely the other way because I don't know how they're gonna react per se. That's a straight skinny from LAPD. Man, 
Why does crap gotta happen now? This is why I split New York in the first place. When your boy Danny took the big sleep, a lot of cash went missing. Niall thinks you have it. Thinks you bolted town with a briefcase full of dough. Well, that's impossible. Keep keep calm, Louie. So, I mean, <laughs> I want to say what's impossible, but I want to ask him. Yeah, fine. I'm gonna say what's impossible. What's impossible? For God's sakes! I I I okay. <laughs> I am terrible at this. Like, I had a feeling it was going to be, like, did you take the money, but... I'm like, no, let's go my... Let's go the first instinct again. Three for three. So, did you boost the dough, or what? Man, get off my case. I don't know anything about Danny's money. Niall thinks you're a patsy. And until they know who the big man is, they'll keep watching you. You hear what I'm saying? Man, they're not going to kill me. At least, not right now. That's it, right? That's it. Oh, this is a trip and a half, man. So let's ask these red questions. I think I know who killed Danny. Hey, it, was, it wasn't you. Hell no. It wasn't you, was it? Of course not. There's no way I kill him. So who was it? Come on, man. Talk, Louie. If you didn't kill Danny, then who did? Man, it was Jay. Jay? Yeah, that's what Danny called him, alright? Jay. Oh, who the hell's Jay? Who's Jay? Well, some cat who works up for Nile. He and Danny used, that, used to run together. Ever meet him? Nah. Just heard about him from Danny. Said Jay was some kind of insurance fraud pro. He'd get an art collector to insure something for a ton of cash, yeah? Then Niall would steal the piece and the insurance money would roll in. When it was over, Niall sold the art back to the mark for big money. Danny was bagging the money from one of those sales. Was Danny working with Jay when he got whacked? Uh, that's what he told me. Of course, he told me a lot of things. Hmm. So why was Danny killed? He got suckered. Suckered? Yeah. You know, Danny was gonna lift his angel painting from Niall's hideout, you know? But all he did was get himself killed. What's so important about his angel painting? Well, that ain't exactly right. It wasn't his idea to boost the painting. It was Jay's. Hmm. What's what what was this angel painting? Man, no clue, man. That's just what Danny called it. Some big painting found in Niles' warehouse. He was crazy about the stupid thing. Said it was like worth a fortune. Said if we could score it, we'd be set for life. Cars, clothes, babes, everything. Ever see this painting? Nah, just heard Danny run his mouth about it. Okay. So who stole the money then? I bet I know who stole the money Danny was carrying. I still don't think it was you, per se. And it wasn't you. So who took it? Man, it was... It was a guy who killed him. So Jay. Hmm. So why'd you leave the city? Let me guess. Because Danny got killed. <laughs> Was it because Danny got killed? You had to get out of the city because your buddy got cut down? That why you left? Why you fled a crime scene? Don't tell me that had nothing to do with your little cross-country trip. It had everything to do with it. We had a plan, you know? A good plan. If Danny's job went okay, we were gonna blow out of there. Drop everything and run? Yeah. At least, that was the plan. Why? Man, I'll tell you, but you won't get it. Danny and me were a couple of poor suckers from the streets. No family, no nothing. Just two punks with no future. 
problem is, neither of us had the nerve to make it as big time crooks. So, we were gonna go someplace else, you know? Become new people, new lives. Yeah, you know, what a couple losers, right? What happened? Uh, we needed some serious bread to get out of the city. Danny was gonna get the money by doing what? One last big job. I tried to stop him, but man. I told him it was too risky. But he wouldn't listen. He always was an idiot. Now, that's that's sad coming from Louie so far. So what was the big job? At first, it was just lifting this painting, yeah? But, you know, things started getting out of control fast. He started talking about uh, taking all kinds of our stuff they had stashed. So you wanted to steal Niall's entire collection? That's not smart. Are you telling me, man? But look, Danny didn't come up with this on his own. He was just suckered into Jay's plan. Jay's plan. What? You don't get it, do you? You don't understand a damn thing. Not about Danny and not about Nile. You're a total washout, man. You saying you do? Yeah, man. More you, more than you at least. So, enlighten me, Einstein. Tell me how smart you are. Okay, that little zoom in. The night Danny died. I was tripping out because he never showed at the restaurant, right? So, I head over to check out Niles' warehouse. As soon as I walk up to the door, BANG! Somebody inside fires a gun. I duck down, scoot over to the door, and take a peek inside. Know what I see, man? Dude in a long coat with a piece in his hand. Then I look past him. There's somebody else in the back of the warehouse, laying on the ground. It's Danny. Guy shot him dead. That was three years ago. December 24th, 1976. I'll never forget it. Which, if I am not mistaken, as the same exact night that we shot Bradley by the pier. I could have sworn, yeah, it was, it was the 24th. The guy who shot Danny. It was Jay. Danny was just lying there, bleeding and crying and dying. But I had nothing, man. No gun, nothing. I just had to wait for Jay to split. By the time I got to Danny, too late, man. Guy could barely talk, but he managed to tell me one thing. Said he'd been tricked. Said Jay was a cop. That he, uh, then he actually apologized to me. Said he was sorry he couldn't get us the money. Damn it, Danny. So, I mean, I'm not sure if you guys are thinking the same thing. Because when I took a look at that silhouette of Jay, I'm like, thinking back in my head, I was like, is that supposed to be Bradley? And I'm pretty sure that's going to be the conclusion eventually. Louis. Officer Hyde, what you told me early in the lobby, you know, about working the Nile case, the part about the guy working undercover is what done it. I figured it. I figured it out, man. What? Look at this picture. All right. This. Yeah, that's right. Guy in the middle is my buddy, Danny. The guy on the right? No, it's Bradley. No, it's Jay. You dig? You get it now? It was your friend, man. Your partner. That's who killed Danny. The cops used him, man. Just a tool in their little investigation. They used him and then they killed him when they didn't need him anymore. Nobody cared, right? Just some dead street punk. What's that worth to the cops? Nothing, man. Less than nothing. Your partner getting shot on the docks? That was justice, man. He screwed up his case and got popped by Nile. Got what he deserved. That's the reason you got can, ain't it? Your partner blew it and the Nile investigation went out of the window. No. No? What do you mean, no? I mean, you're wrong. About Bradley. Niall didn't shoot him. 
But I did. What? Bradley was a busy boy. He double-crossed a lot of people, including the police. When I heard, I went after him. Another flashback, same thing. He's on the take. What the hell? Boom. It's the third or fourth time we've seen that flashback. Bradley took a dive in the Hudson. Body never turned up. I took the heat for the shooting and quit the force. But. Whoa, man. That's heavy. That's a crazy story, man. That dirtbag. He screwed everybody, didn't he? Even you. You must really hate him. Wait. You don't think he's dead, do you? I get Officer Hyde. Yeah, I get it now. That's why you're some loser salesman. You're looking for Jay. I mean, Bradley. Wow. What a trip. Listen, Officer Hyde. Why don't we team up? Team up? If your story's on the level, Niles watching me and they want me dead. And I've never even smelled their damn money. Your partner framed me good, man. It's all his fault. So Bradley's still alive and kicking. I say we grab him and hand him over to Niall. You serious? Yeah, man. Now, now that we're on, like, the same team, I'll do whatever, you know? Just give the word. Let me think of that, Louie. I'll talk to you later. Yay! Even though I failed a couple times, in a sense, it was okay, because it's like, try again? Bradley murdered his Nile connection and made off the money. Why the hell would he do it? Could it be this angel painting? Did he betray us all for a damn piece of canvas? Bradley. Okay, hold on, Hyde. Take it easy. I gotta get my ducks in a row here. Oh, it looks like we're about to be finished with chapter two. So we kind of do like a brain blast thing at the end, a little, little recap. All right. Someone dropped off my package, and I checked all, I checked out the order sheet. While searching for the things listed there, I ran into Rosa. She was cleaning, but I learned some news about Louie. Louie's fallen hard for a damn dame named... Uh, I thought he liked both Iris and Mila. But I, I think it's more so about Mila. Yeah, that's her. Rosa said Louie's gone gaga for Mila. When I cornered Louie in, in the linen room, he told me something interesting. Said there's been a weird story about the hotel floating around for years. Seems people are talking about a ghost appearing here. The story got its start about... I thought it was ten years ago. That's right. A young girl was murdered here 10 years ago. The case was never solved. Louis told me that lost and found items were kept in the main, the main office. I waited for Dunning to leave. I went in and tossed the place. The thing I found in the cabinet was... The cabinet? Um... A small red box. That's right. After I figured out how to unlock the cabinet... I found the little red box I've been looking for. I never looked inside it, though. When I came out of Dunning's office, I ran into Louie again. He wanted to know if I'd been talking to Rosa or Dunning about him. He was worried I'd told him about his criminal record, but I hadn't. But when I talked to Ed later on, I learned something new about Louie. That new thing was... Um, that Niall was after him. That's right. That's what Ed told me. Louie's pal got murdered, and all the money he was carrying disappeared. I decided to track Louie down and get the dirt on him while he left Manhattan. I found him in his room and made him spill his guts. I need to know why he decided to leave the streets behind. Louie finally cracked and told me what, what was... What was... What was... What? what? Did I not read that? Well, I don't give a damn. It seems there was an un undercover cop involved in his friend's murder. The name of Louie's pal was... Danny. 
That's right. Louie's buddy was named Danny. Louie told me all about how his pal got double-crossed by an undercover cop. The cop was investigating Niall. The cop was Bradley. Meeting Louie helped me learn some things I didn't know before. That information brought me a step closer to Bradley's trial. But why did Bradley turn his back on the Force? Why did he betray me? Even after all this time, I still don't have a damn clue. Listen, Bradley. I don't know where you're at or what you're doing. But I think the answer's somewhere in this hotel. A man stayed here six months ago. A man with my name. I know you're connected in some way, Bradley. Tonight, Hotel Dusk is going to show me how. All right, and that is the ending of chapter two. Nice. I feel we're making some pretty good progress, but I'm not really sure how many chapters there are. It, it still could be like we're scratching the surface here, but we'll see what's what. Chapter three, six to... Oh, it's a whole hour this time, six to seven. All right. Let's see. Oh, we're back in my room, huh? Was there anything that we needed to do, per se? I mean, the the place is open now, the restaurant, so I guess I'll check that out. Um, and, yeah, but there's nothing going on here that I... Oh, wait. Oh, for God's sakes, I was just there. Huh? It's the phone. It sure is. I don't know why I had a feeling it was going to ring, too. Whatever. It's ringing. But who is it? Kyle? Rachel? What now? Hey, sweetie. Who's Bradley? What? After you got off the phone with Ed, I heard him talking to himself. Well, muttering is more like it. He said something about giving up the search for Bradley. Come on, Kyle. Who's Bradley? I mean, it's not important. Bradley... Forget it, Rachel. It's got nothing to do with you. Well, aren't you just full of Christmas cheer? Come on, handsome. Tell me, please. Look, it's a long story. And I hate long stories. Pain in, pain in my ass. Okay, okay, I get it. Hey, is Ed there? Put him on, will you? Sorry, sweetie, but he just stepped out. Ah, oh, figures. Have him page me when he gets back, okay? Will do. Take care. Maybe he's right. Maybe my search for Bradley is a fool's errand. Of course, I don't know what I'd, what I'd do if I, if I gave it up. Other than quit his quit this miserable job. Yeah, maybe talk to Rachel a little bit more. Yeah, Come on, man. She seems interested. Go for her. Why not? I mean, if both are consenting and actually have a feelings for each other, of course. Ah, oh, screw it. I'm hungry. Guess I'll head down to that five-star restaurant and see what, they're, what they got. I mean, I'm all game for that. Let's go ahead and do that. Hey, hello. Oh, oops. Where the hell did I just go? I'm oh, sorry. I I, just, I went a little bit uh, further along there, but uh, yeah, right. Uh, right in the restaurant hallway, or going to the restaurant hallway. I see uh, Melissa and her father. Oh, look who's here. The father is kind of a douche so far. Every time I've tried talking to him, I wonder what they're talking about. Well, let's go ahead and talk to them. Melissa! Look at me when I'm speaking to you, young lady. Why would you do that while we're eating? But... But nothing. Dad... Don't dad me. I've had up to here with your back talk. For once, could you just do as you're told and be quiet? I'm so tired of this, and I don't want to hear any more excuses. Go back to the room. I'll be up in a few minutes. Dad? Dad, I... I hate you! Uh-oh. Hey. Like, everything okay? What's going on? 
nothing? You got quite a set of pipes there. Yeah, I'm loud, so? You gonna yell at me too? Melissa turns and runs up the stairs. Melissa! Hey. Yes? Looks like a rough job. Raising kids, I mean. Ugh, yes. Sometimes it is. I'm sorry you had to see that. Wait, hold it. Uh... As much as I don't like him the way he's treating her and everything like that, just... whatever. Don't be sorry, kids need to be kept in line, right? Well, yes, but... I'd rather not be seen scolding my daughter in public. It happens. What's your name? Oh, that's right, we, we haven't, uh... This is a bit after the fact, but let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Kevin Woodward. I'm a surgeon at Robbins Memorial Hospital in Santa Monica. Kevin Woodward, huh? Nice name, buddy. Kyle Hyde. I'm a salesman for Red Crown. Kyle Hyde. Yeah. Kyle Hyde. Oh, interesting. Wait, now what? Do I want to smug about it? No, what is it? You got a problem? No, 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 it's nothing. I just thought I'd heard your name before, that's all. Have we perhaps met before? Nope. First time. Of course it is, of course. I'm sure my memory is just playing tricks on me. Please forgive me. Uh, by the way, Mr. Hyde, it seems you've spoken with my daughter, Melissa, on previous occasions. Would you mind telling me what sort of conversations you had? I mean, nothing special at all. We just chatted. Nothing specific. I see. So I think I have a feeling why I... Why Kevin may know our name already. But we'll see. So you know somebody with my name? No, I think one of my patients may have had a similar name, but I'm sure my memory is just playing tricks on me. Yes, that must, that must be it. After all, we just met for the first time, yes? I'm sorry for rambling. If you'll excuse me. Kevin leaves. Okay, well, um... That takes care of that. Wait, wait a minute. What did Kevin say? You spoke with my daughter Melissa on previous occasions. Would you mind telling me what sort of conversations you had? I wonder what Kevin's so worried about. You know, quick question, or just quickly before I go into the restaurant, I want to see if it's possible I can talk to them again in their room. Because it's going to bother me a little bit. And... Crap. Well, never mind then. But well, I guess we'll have to keep that in mind once we see them again. So the restaurant should not be open, and sure enough. Oh, freaking hell, Louie scared the crap out of me. Oh. Jesus. All right. Uh, good evening, uh, sir. Welcome to the Moonlight Grill. I like the sir. That's a nice touch. Come on, brother. Just don't hassle me. I'm just doing my job. You the host for this restaurant, too? I told you. Dunning's a total slave driver. Sun goes down, I gotta run this place and the bar, too. Anyway, we got a table ready. Tonight's special is a big steak with some kind of weird garlic butter. I could go for a steak. The grub any good here? Eh, better than you think. Rose is an old windbag, but she knows which end of the spoon to use. All right, I'll take the steak. And some spuds and eggs, too. Hash brown potatoes, eggs, sunny side up. Damn, sounds good, man. I'm hungry. <laughs> that smug-ass face, like, I'm hungry. Oh, wait, I gotta ask you before I forget again. Anything wrong with your room? Wrong? Yeah, you know, lights don't work, the water's messed up, or rats, or whatever. Nope, everything's at aces. Cool, cool, good to hear. Uh, some of the rooms on the second floor are messed up, you know? Dunning ain't let anyone stay in them for six months now. 
six months ago is when the other person arrived. What the hell happened? Hey. I mean, why? You had rooms out of commission for the past six months? Yeah, they're all messed up. Total holes. Of course, Dunn won't fix them. Says it's a waste of dough. Guys like Scrooge is only fatter and meaner. So which rooms? Let's see, uh, 217, 220, and 218. Wait, what's a big deal about 217? Hold on. Oops, Daisy. Where's my watch? Stopwatch. There it is. So, okay, it's 217. Nobody's in 217 right now. Oh! But 217 is a room that the other Kyle Hyde was in. We don't have anybody in 220. And 218, we actually don't have anybody in there either. Huh, okay. Three rooms that aren't being used, huh? Better write that down in the old notebook. I can't remember crap. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. I guess I will write that down. Um, shoot, which ones were they again? I think there were 217, 218, and 220. And that was for six months. Okay. Yeah, I could write it down in the game memo, but I like using my own physical stuff. All right. So where's the bar again? So where's the bar? Oh, straight down the hall. Straight down the hall, my man. Look for the seven star sign. Bar opens at nine. Want to grab a drink with me later? Depends. You got any decent bourbon? Yeah, booze is one thing Dunning don't skip on. That bar, my man, is well stocked. Got a whole bunch of Kentucky gentlemen to introduce you to. <laughs> Sounds good. Hell yeah, it does. I ain't had a decent drinking buddy in forever, man. So, room 217's on the fritz? Yeah, ain't been touched in six months or so. Really? Six months, huh? Seems like a long time to let a room sit there. What's going down? I know that room. That's where the guy with my name stayed. No way, man. How'd you find that out? I looked at the guest register. <laughs> you did? How? I broke into Dunning's office. Oh, man, you've got to be pulling my chain. You broke into the office? Why'd you go and do a thing like that? I think the guy with my name was Bradley. Get out of here. It's a hunch, but I think I'm right. Look, man, even if you're right, you can't just go running around a hotel like your ass is on fire. Chasing clues is one thing, but this is crazy. You ain't a cop no more. You you can't be picking locks and breaking doors and all that. If Dunn finds out, he's gonna totally trip out. Come on, man. You need to know anything about what happens here. Just ask me. You hear me, brother? I hear you. All right. I got something for you. Get me to room 217. Huh? I want to poke around in there. Poke around? That special cup, cop lingo? Yeah, all right, man. I'll see what I can do. Dunn keeps all the room keys locked up, so I got to wait for the right time. But don't worry, there's one thing I know, it's boosting stuff from old people. Do it. Restaurant's in the back around the corner. But one of the center tables is open. Go ahead and sit there. Right. Okay, cool, cool. Um, I don't think there's anything else to ask him, but let me just double check. Louie. What? Yeah, sure enough, there isn't anything. I don't think I can show him anything. Uh, what happens if I show him the magazine again, just for the hell of it? Now that's what I'm talking about. Ooh, okay. He's happy, but all right. Restaurants that away. All right. And this is the kitchen, which... Can we even go inside? Is Rosie gonna get mad? The kitchen's too busy for chit-chat. What do you want? What are you thinking? You'll have to leave. Come on, get out. Go on now. All right. All right, I figured that was going to happen. 
So here's the bar, which apparently is uh, not opened yet. And is that uh, Helen? I think. Yeah, I think it's uh, no. See, uh, Iris, Iris. What's the princess want now? Ah. Hey. Hey, you're in the way. Move. I'm hungry. What's wrong? Oh, Mr. Hyde, you you scared me. Where are you da where are you daydreaming about? You never heard me coming, did you? Oh, I'm sorry. Something awful happened, and now I'm depressed. Yeah? Um, well, you, you do seem upset. What's wrong? Tell me, Mr. Hyde. Have you ever been hated by someone? Eh, once or twice. Why? I can't believe what she said to me. She said she hated me. She told me to go away. Can you imagine? I have no idea who the hell said that, so what's going on? Would someone tell you they didn't like you? Yes, and I've never had that happen to me before. It was such a shock. It's that awful child's fault. I, I doubt I'll, I doubt I'll never, I'll ever recover. What, Melissa called you stupid? Like, you can't take it to heart. Wait, what are you talking about? Just what I said. It's all that girl's fault. Did you see a young girl on your way here? Uh, yeah, Melissa. A young girl? You mean Melissa? Is that her name? Melissa? Yeah. What What does young girl do, do to you? I merely spoke to her. That's all I did. You must believe me. And do you know what she did? She threw her rag doll at me and ran off. Oh, is that why Kevin got pissed off at Melissa? I mean... I can kind of understand. It's like, you don't act like that, you know? Especially the strangers. Well, you shouldn't be throwing crap at anybody, but still. So why should you throw a doll at you? I'm sure I have no idea. Possibly raised by wolves or hippies or the like. What? But I swear to you, I did nothing to provoke the little hellion. She had an adorable handmade doll, and I just asked her who made it. That's it? Yes, that's it. I didn't say anything that could be con construed as rude or mean. That's why I was so surprised. I've never had a child treat me like that before. Never, huh? I mean, I don't... These both sound terrible. I'm not going to say she's nuts, but I don't want to say yeah, I bet you hate kids. I'm going to second one. Screw it. You even like kids? What do you mean by that? Kids. Do you like them? Well, yes, of course. As long as they as well as long as they're well mannered. Uh, figures. Figures. What figures? Figures the kids saw right through you. And what does that mean? She smelled your act from a mile away. I still see no reason for her to throw her doll at me. What a horrid child. Mr. Hyde. I find you to be an ill-tempered brute. What? What the hell did I do? Yeah, screw it. I don't give a damn. I'll, I'll hopefully it doesn't bite me in the ass later, though. Iris finishes yapping, storms off. <laughs> Maybe now I can finally grab some grub. Alright, but before we do so... I just want to see if there's, like, um... Anything to examine, which... Frankly, I don't really see. Oops, did I? Sorry, my game kind of moved there. I hope the guy didn't move too much. Uh, wait a minute. Hey, 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 hey. There's something on the podium. I don't know if you guys can see that. I think it's one of the stars. But I can't examine it because Louie's right here. Ugh. Come on, Louie. I mean... Yeah, that's that's a I think it's a star thing. Uh, okay, we got to keep that in mind. We got to examine it when Louis's not there. So here's a restaurant. Huh? What's that? I think that's her doll. 
Yeah, it even shows up on the map. Well, let's take a look around first. See, the tablecloth is nice and clean, not a stain to be seen. Well, that's good. Still some dishes on the table. Uh, just your average wooden chair. All the tables have them. Wooden chair, nothing interesting about it. Take a look at the windows. Yep, there's nothing very interesting outside. Okay. And I don't see anything on the other side besides this lamp. There's a lamp. How? This one's only 30 years out of style. There's something on the chair. Huh? Well, this is... I found a rag doll. So this is it. This is a doll Iris was talking about. Well, someone must have forgotten it. Guess I'll run up to run up run it up to her later. Might as well jot it down in my notebook so I don't forget. Uh, do I have to? <sighs> yeah, hold on. I'll, I'm gonna put it in here. Return doll. Okay. Uh, I think that's it over there. I mean, part of me doesn't really want to examine everything. Oh, boy. Okay, well, we automatically just sat down. I sit down at a table in the middle of the restaurant. Guys like me, uh, guys like me get used to eating at odd times, but, uh, <laughs> I haven't had dinner this early in a long while. Sorry to keep you waiting. Busy, 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 you know. Anyway, here's your ribeye steak, Mr. Hyde. And you also ordered hash browns and eggs sunny side up, right? That does look pretty good, even though it's super blurry, but look, not bad. The steak was seared with salt, pepper, and my own homemade garlic butter. It smells delicious, doesn't it? It sure does. Yeah. Enjoy. Rosa places my dinner on the table and walks away. There's a huge plate on the table. It's filled with chow. It all looks delicious. It smells good. I'm, I'm assuming it tastes good. Holy yeah, he cleaned that damn plate. Oh. Oh, that was fantastic. Are you finished? Huh? I'll take your plate now if, you, if that's alright. Is it? I'm sure it is. Well, look at that. You joined the Clean Plate Club. Not a crumb left. Thanks. Thanks, Rosa. That was delicious. Wow, I think it's the first time I've actually seen Kyle, like, smile, smile. Wow. Well, isn't that nice to hear? It does my heart good to see a man eat. Oh, and that and this dessert is for Mr. Smith. It's his way of apologizing for the mix-up with your package. Ooh, what's that? It looks like a pound cake or a loaf cake or something. It's another house specialty. Tea chiffon cake. <laughs> Sounds great. Take your time. No need to rush. Enjoy your food. Rosa leaves the cake on the table and walks away. Well, that's quite the cake. I'm actually kind of hungry right now. I probably should eat something after this. Oh my god. Mr. Hyde. Huh? Oh, it's him. Oh, it's Summer. But he wanted a bite of my cake. That's... That's jacked up. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt your meal, but may I have a moment of your time? Sure, why not? I'm too full to run away. Er, yes, quite. Actually, it's about the package mixed up we had earlier. Uh, I was curious as to whether or not there was something else inside the box. Uh, something other than the notebook, that is? Something else? Yes, something that you may have overlooked. Something small? I... I didn't see anything. It's possible it fell into the box uh, during transport. It was supposed to have been placed within the pages of the notebook. Uh, Mr. Hyde, would you mind searching that box for me one last time? Yeah, sure, but let me ask some questions first. What, something small? Like what? A bookmark. Uh-huh. 
So, what kind of bookmark? It, it's quite small, and it has a picture of an angel on it. Sounds lovely. Yes, it's quite lovely. It's a blue book, uh, blue bookmark with a ribbon. Please do remember to look for it, Mr. Hyde. The only bookmark, bookmark I remember seeing is the one in Dunning's office, but I doubt that's the same thing. At least I like to think it's not. Um, so what was written in that notebook? I saw the title of the front. Secret word, wasn't it? Is it a book or a manuscript or something like that? Mr. Hyde, did you see fit to read the contents of my notebook? Uh, I couldn't, I couldn't read I just looked at the cover. I'm not much of a reader. I just looked at the cover. I see. That is for the best. What's this guy so worried about? My bookmark is in your hands, my good man. Excuse me. Sure. Summer leaves. I can't forget that bookmark. Grief from the talking blimp's one thing that I don't need. I'll just drop a line in my notebook so I don't forget. Oh, okay. Let me just take, take some notes down. Look. Book. Mark. <laughs> Although, you know, that's the second time that an angel something has been mentioned. Makes me wonder now if there's a connection. Are you finished? There's someone yelling behind me. Someone yelled behind me. Huh? How was the cake? Was it good? I sure hope so. It was fantastic, Rosa. Best meal I've had in ages. That's so nice to hear. Many thanks. By the way, the man who just who was just here in the, in the, is a guest from 211, right, Mr. Summer? Yeah. He seems so familiar. Um, I think he's a writer. He's some kind of writer. What? A writer? Yeah, pretty famous, too. At least in his own mind. Hold it! Martin Summer. Martin Summer. Oh, I'm sure I'm such a fool. How could I have not realized? It's so obvious. What are you talking about? I saw his name on the register and recognized it, of course, but I never thought it was THE Martin Summer. But hey. Um, just clean. Oh my god. No, no, no. That's rude. What do you mean, THE Martin Summer? It really is him. Now I'm sure of it. Martin Summer is staying here. THE Martin Summer. Ooh, this is so exciting. I'm such a fan. I still can't believe I didn't recognize him. I just assumed it was a guest with the same name. I tell you, I'm a world-class fool. Such a fool. So, you're a summer fan, eh? Oh, I'm not crazy or anything, but yes, I enjoy his books. So, what kind of writer is Summer, anyway? Well, his first book came out about ten years ago and won some major awards. Publishers were very excited. They called him the Maestro of Mysteries. You must have heard of his first book. It was called The Secret Word. Oh, yeah. Um... Wait a minute. That was his first book? Got lucky on the first try, did he? Yes, his very first one was a huge bestseller. I remember everyone talking about it at the time. The secret word? I never heard that name before. Wait, that's what was written on the cover of Summer's notebook. Hmm. It was a very thrilling story. That's it. What? I must get his autograph. Alright, well, hold on really quick. What's the book about? So what's the secret word about? Ooh, it's about a man who commits a perfect crime. He does so to get revenge on a friend who betrayed him. Critics call it a gritty descent into the darkness of the human soul. It's really quite shocking. Don't listen to me. Rose the book reviewer. Revenge on a friend, huh? Hell of an idea. There was a guest a while back who had the same name as me, right? The same name as you. About six months ago. Six months ago? Nope, not that I remember. Nope, nope, nothing. I can't recall another guest by the name of the Kyle Hyde. Really? 
Oh, what am I thinking? I don't have time to stand here gabbing with you. I gotta go. Busy, busy. Rosa finishes talking and scurries away. Well, I guess I'm done here for the time being. We got a few things to do. We got got to return a doll. We gotta look for that bookmark. Mm. Oh, yay! Look at that. It's another uh, thing. So this is number five, and then number six is actually um, on the podium. So we gotta remember that. Geez, negative fifty-four. See, so yeah, one, two, three, four, five. So. There's one more. I don't know where to fudge that could be, then. We'll look for it eventually. Let's see. A piano, huh? I wonder if Dunning tickles the ivories. I never liked that saying. There's a small bench in front of the piano. Too bad I don't play. I wish I could I could play. I used to a little bit back like in like junior high, but I've stopped. The sword must be older than Helen. That's rude. Looks like they're having a good meal. Looks like a photo of people who stayed here before. A newspaper article on a hotel, nothing useful here. This is taken at the hotel's grand opening. The sort of old and hard to see. Looks at like a photo, but it's really a painting. That's actually kind of clever. Hmm. Those speakers are huge. <laughs> and there's quite the amp. That's quite the amp. Okay. Um, my something tells me that we're, there's really not much else to do here. But I'm going to look around anyway. Whoa, is this reserved? There's a little sign on the table. It says reserved. For who? Iris? Bottle of wine. It's been wiped clean. Wooden chair, nothing special. And wooden chair about will give me splinters if I sit on it. That, ouch. That has to suck. Uh, okay, don't see anything else. Can't do anything on that table. That's the table we looked at before. All right, no, I think we're good here. So let's go ahead and head out. And we're just about an hour into this, too, so... Oh, he's still there, damn it! <gasps> and Mila! Huh? It's Mila. What's she doing? Oh, man, oh, man. I kind of want to talk to her, but at the same time, I'm, like, very close to an hour. <laughs> nah, whatever, I'll do it. Because I, I feel like we didn't do much. I mean, we did an hour's worth of stuff, but, like, progress was, like, kind of still blah. Yo, babe, it's cool that you want to help out and all, yeah? I dig it. I dig you. And I know old Mama Sass feels the same way. But she's, like, really busy right now. Aw, oh, man, don't look at me like that. You're breaking my heart, baby. Come on, go on back to Rose's room and hang out for a bit, please. Mila leaves the room. Like, what was that all about? Did Mila actually say anything? Nah, man, not a peep. Maybe she can't speak after all. You think she can't talk or she just don't want to? I can't tell, man. The whole thing blows my mind. Who knows? She's a fox either way. Uh, am I right? Woo, okay. Calm down. Oh, 20 minutes uh, went by. All right. Damn, I still can't look at that sticker, though. You got a minute? What? I'm working, man. Catch me later. All right. Well, I guess I'm glad I did that because now we don't have to worry about that. So it's 6.20 and... I mean, there's a few things we gotta do. Like, Louis said he's gonna go try getting the getting us into room 217, so that's fine. But we also have to return a doll to Melissa. And we also gotta look... Go back to our room and look for his bookmark for Martin. Uh, those are two, I guess, priorities for the time being. Um, I, I will come, I mean, I'm assuming I can come back in this hallway now, eventually, um, 
when Louie's not here so I can examine this. It sucks I can't examine it while he's here. It's the same thing like his room. It wouldn't let me examine it just because he was in there. But I'm sure I can come back here later. Actually, I'm sure I can because I gotta go to the bar. Um, yeah, that's right. The bar opens at 9, though. So I'm gonna go back there anyway. And just for hell of it, can I talk to Rosa just a teeny bit? Since I'm here, you know. I'm busy. If you need something, you'll have to come back later. Shoo! Alright, geez, alright, fine. Might as well. Just wanted to check. Okay then, ladies and gentlemen. Um, that is going to be it for today. And next time, we'll go ahead and uh, return the doll, look for a bookmark, and see what happens afterwards. So, as usual, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time for Let's Play Hotel Dusk Room 215. Love you all so much. Have a great day. Thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, feel free to leave a comment, a like, and subscribe for future content, where I aim to release a video a day. And if you do subscribe, make sure to click on the bell symbol to be notified once new videos are uploaded. You can also catch me streaming from time to time on Twitch, follow me on Twitter, and join my Discord server to relax with other gamers. All this information is in the description box below. Have a great day.